If you're serious about surviving a loss of the electric grid and you want to maintain your standard of living, then you're going to need a way that you can have hot water so you can still have hot showers and do your normal cooking and other things that require warm water during a grid down situation. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can use a traditional electric water heater if you have to when running on battery backup power. Hi everyone, Joe Ordia here for Solar Surge, and for the past eight years I've been helping families get their home set up to be able to survive a loss of the electric grid. And on this channel we talk about all things related to solar, battery storage, emergency preparedness, survival, and things of that sort. Now, one of the things I always say is that when you're preparing your house to be able to run off the grid, you want to have options for alternate fuels or alternate ways that you can heat the house and provide hot water and do your cooking so that you don't have to use traditional electric appliances to do all of that. The reason is because those things have a tendency to be able to overload a solar power battery backup system. And it also drains the battery at nighttime when you're really trying to conserve energy. So you want to be able to do those heating related activities with an alternate fuel like gas or uh, propane or maybe even a wood stove or pellet stove if that's available to, uh, available to you. However, if gas and wood is just not an option in your location and you're stuck with an electric water heater, I'm going to show you how you can still get your electric water heater to work even if you're running off of a single battery backup like the Tesla Powerwall or other similar battery storage. What we have to do in this case is we have to get the wattage draw on the electric water heater low enough to where your, your battery backup solution can handle it. So look at the Tesla Powerwall for example. Uh, when running in a grid down mode, it has a maximum continuous power of 5,000 watts and a surge power of 7,000 watts. Okay, but that's our power budget, 5,000 watts continuous draw. Now the problem is this, traditional electric water heaters have a 4,500 watt heating element. So of the total 5,000 watts, if we were to connect this, 4,500 out of that 5,000 is eaten up just by the water heater, meaning that there's not enough power left for everything else that you need, like your fridge, your lights, your home office. So I'm gonna show you how we can solve that problem. And by the way, the other thing is, if you're using the Tesla battery, they won't even allow you to hook the Tesla battery up to an electric water heater this size, because this, this will need to be on a 30 amp circuit breaker. With a single Tesla battery, you can only use 20 amp circuit breakers and below for your backup loads panel. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to derate the water heater's heating element to where it can run off of a 20 amp circuit breaker instead of a 30 amp circuit breaker and prevent overloading the battery system. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is take a look, and I'll put a link below where you can get this as well. But you're going to want to take a look at the smaller 3500 watt uh, electric heating element. Now, this will require you to do some minor uh, maintenance here on the water heater unit. We're going to have to re remove the existing heating element that's here and replace it with a slightly smaller one at 3500 watts. The good thing though about the 3500 watt heating element is that although it takes a little bit longer when the heating element's active, it takes a little bit longer to reheat the water tank. It's a low enough draw that we can reduce the circuit breaker size from 30 amps down to 20 amps. That also means that if you're running on the Tesla Powerwall battery backup, where you've got that 5,000 watt limit for the single battery, only 3,500 of the 5,000 is used by the water heater, leaving you 1,500 watts that you could potentially be running other things at the same time, like your fridge, your TV, or your computer. Now guys, you wanna be smart about this, right? Because if you are in a grid down mode, you still need to use these uh, heavy loads very sparingly. And so what I would recommend is if you are in a grid down mode, and if you've applied the, the D rate to where you can get your water heater connected for battery backup, I'd recommend only use it during daylight hours when you have the solar power coming in, so you, you can use the solar to help support the load directly. You don't necessarily want this pulling off your battery overnight where you're really gonna be trying to conserve as much as possible. So you're gonna leave your water heater on during daylight hours, that should be fine. 
switch the circuit breaker off before you go to bed. That way you know your battery has enough juice in it to carry the fridge and any other appliances that you have to keep on um, overnight. Well folks, I hope this video has been informative for you. Yeah, as always, if you're getting good value from the information here, make sure you click on the like button and click on that subscribe button as well. And of course, go ahead and share the link directly for people that are gonna benefit from the information here. Thank you again, folks, for taking the time to watch today's video. As always, I'm Joe Ordia, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.